everyone. Welcome to the Glockster tutorial. This is an application that is meant for online poster making and it's free. You only need to sign up and it's a great way to make uh, collages for any class and share it with your teacher just through a link and it's interactive as well. And I'm going to be showing you all those features and everything you can put into your Glockster. Like I mentioned, you do need to sign up. So if you go to Glockster.com, you're going to create an account. And right down here on the opening page, it's going to ask you for your nickname, an email to be associated with this account, and a password as well. So after you're done filling out that information, you're going to go to Create Account. Once you fill out the information, Glogster will send you an email to the address that you entered. You need to click on the link that they give you in order to activate your account. Once you access your activation link, you will be taken to Glogster's dashboard. Right on this page, you can see the Glogs you have created, adjust your account settings, including your password and profile picture, and post a new blog. And that's where we're going to start today. So click on the button, post new blog. And the first thing it's going to ask is the format, which can be portrait or landscape. I'm going to do a portrait blog, and again, post new blog. Once I do this, it's going to send me to Glogster's workspace. It takes up the whole screen and it always gives you a default design that we can edit, change, delete. The first thing you want to do is go to add content and build a wall. A wall is the background color or graphic that will be behind everything that you put on top. We have a couple options of where our images can come from. We can always upload an image from our computer. There's an impressive Glogster gallery. Let's say I wanted to upload my own picture for my background. I'm going to go to Upload, and it's going to open my Finder. I have my picture here, and I'm going to press Open. As it's loading my file, you can see on the right-hand side that there's a couple different ways I can lay out the picture. I can choose stretch, stretch and fill, normal, or tile. If I want to do normal, I can still choose where the picture lies, right over here. Depending on the resolution of your image, be careful with stretch and stretch and fill, as it might look pixelated. For this blog, I'm going to choose one of the gallery backgrounds. And I think I'll go with this one right here. So I'm going to press use it. And now I can see that I have a blog background. I'm going to go back to content. And let's look at the first option, which is text. Again, I have basic text and gallery. Galleries are ways to lay text with graphic. So you can choose any of these and then write your text on top. I'm going to choose basic, which it's on right now. Again, I'm going to press use it. Now, this window does not go away. So if you think it's not working and you continue to press use it and then you close this, you're going to see all the times that you added text. You just need to press use it once and then I can click on these boxes, click on the trash can until I only have one left. So I'm going to just kind of scroll this back up to the top. And I'm going to double click inside here. If I wanted to edit this, I just highlight it, go to these letters on the side, and as you probably guessed, I can change font here, size, color, I can choose to underline it, and how the alignment uh, should be too. So I'm going to pick my font, choose my size, I can expand the box so I can 
see everything. And I'm going to choose a color too. By default, it goes up to 96, but you can just type in a number to make it bigger. When I finish, I'm just going to press the X, see how it looks, and move this where I want it to be. And you can see the tags that I have in the corner. All of these can rotate the orientation of the text. I'm going to kind of put mine on a slant. Now I can also add some special effects to this text. So if I have it selected here, I'm going to click on this magic wand and I can add a shadow. So the first thing is I want to pick a color for my shadow. And here I can adjust the blur of the shadow, how dark it is, the angle of the shadow, and I'm going to press apply. And it just put a really light haze around it. And when you play with those settings, you can see the different kinds of, of shadows that you can get. So those are the basics of the default text tool where you just type, there's no graphic with it. There's one more thing that I can do, and it's the link tool. This means because my blog is going to be interactive, if anyone clicks on the word Cancun, it can take them to a website. But first, I need to copy the address of the website that I want it to link to. So I'm going to copy it. And with my text selected, I'm going to go click on the link button. And just paste it here and press apply. Now it doesn't look like anything has changed now, but let's preview our blog. And when I put my mouse over it, I get a triple W there. And if I click, sure enough, it takes me to Cancun.com. So that works. So when I want to get out of preview mode, I'm just going to go back to edit. And let's go back to adding content. We've already done the basic text. The gallery works pretty much the same way. And I'm going to go with this one up here and press use it. Again, just click it once and close the box. And you'll find it right down here. And here I'm going to write my text. And again, I can edit it in the way that I want to see it. Okay, so those are the basics with adding the two different kinds of text. So let's go back to add content and look at the graphics options that we have. These are the different categories that they list all the graphics and clip arts for you to use. All of these can be sized up really big, they can be small, and some, as you can see, are animated. So I'm going to go through and just pick a couple graphics that I want to use on mine. And the cool thing is as soon as you drop it, it's already moving. So you don't have to preview it to see the animations. I'm just going to add a couple more. So I've added the graphics that I want to the top of my blog. And now I'm ready to add some of my own personal pictures. So I'm going to go to image. And when you do this, you're going to see a couple options of sources where you can get your pictures from. In my case, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go to Upload and just grab some pictures that I have in my Finder. I'm going to choose this image here and let it load. And another option I have is to add a frame to any of my images. Again, just add a little more design. To, to what you're uploading, and they have all of your frame styles over here. So I'm just going to choose this one, press use it, close this, and I can see my picture here. Once you start layering images and graphics on top of each other on your Glogster, make sure that you have things overlapping the way that they should. For example, I want this speech bubble that says plan your trip today to be on top of the Cancun picture. I can click on the Cancun picture and send it behind the graphic or put it back on top. 
And if I click the graphic, it does the same thing. I can put the graphic on top. So make sure you just check in the corner that you have the order of the layers the way you want it to be. Now we're going to add a video right on my blog. So if someone comes and visits, they can click and watch and add content. We are on the video tab. And they have some options here for different, different resources, again, where you can go and grab video. If you have a YouTube account, it'll load videos that you've uploaded before. The easiest way, I think, is just to use the link tool and have your YouTube video here that you want to have in your blog. Copy the address, paste it here, and click Add to my files. And the video will load right here, and you can just press use it and close that box. And I'm free to put this uh, wherever I want it to play. I'm just going to size it down a little bit. If we go to the settings for the video, we have autoplay option, which would mean as soon as your glog loads, this video starts playing. And you have the volume here. And we already talked about the overlapping features. And you can also even add a shadow to your video box. What I like to do when I embed a video is just test it. So I'm going to go back to preview. And it tells me I'm in preview mode. So when I come down here, it should play. Okay, so that's all good. I'm going to go back to editing. All right, so let's say I'm all done with my blog. Obviously, I can add a lot more, but I'm done with my blog. I'm going to come to the bottom here, and we're going to press Save and Share. And you're going to make sure uh, you give it a title. And what I've put here are some tags or keywords so it's searchable in Glogster. Now, it's only going to be searchable if you make your Glog public, which means anyone that has a Glogster account will be able to search for other Glogs that have been made, and they'll also see yours. Um, I'm going to put private for mine, and I'm going to show you what happens when you do that because it's a little bit different. So I'm going to press private and then save and share and you're going to get this notice which means it is saved and here's the link but it's not published but to Glogster that means it's not published on their site so you can still give this address here to a friend to your teacher um, to turn in your blog and they will be able to see it it's just not public on Glogster.com I'm now going to click on view this blog to see what it'll look like to any user who comes to my blog address. And you can see um, anyone who visits it can like it, they can repost it, they can share it with some social networking sites. But we want to make sure that everything is working as it should. So if I go to Cancun, it should take me to the website that's working. If I come down here, this video should play. That's working too. Let's say you just want to present it in class and you want to just show it. How do you get back to your own blogs? You're going to log into blogster.com and you're going to go to dashboard and it'll open your account and you're going to click on Glogs. And here you have the Glogs that you have created. So right here I can click on Cancun. It tells me that it's private. And I'm back to where I just was. So if I wanted to share this, again, I can grab this link or I can show it in class if I go to full size it expands it just a little bit bigger and I can just project it on the board like that. Glogster is a great alternative to presenting information. It lets you be creative and it allows your user to have an interactive experience. So I hope this tutorial has helped you and that you have fun making online posters in the future.